church this week. We are in Romans chapter 4. Um, I wanted to do a video because there's a few other things that I think uh, that would be beneficial for us to look at in looking at this chapter. Um, <clears throat> you, we, we started into it last week in 3, but you know he really makes a transition, Paul makes a transition into talking about the faith of Abraham and like I say we, we started into that discussion some but chapter 4 is really about that but it kind of runs so deep that there's more that I want to talk about with that um, and when you read through chapter 4 you know this is really about righteousness and Abraham is just an example of that and Paul is bringing that to the table of, of him being an example for us because this is really not just about just about Abraham but uh, but the first question I have is is this is is righteousness when it comes to righteousness which came first the faith or the works and the works would would be circumcision we talked about that but but that's what the the work or the outward expression would be and um, that he really addresses that here and the next thing he goes is talking about the realization of what happens when we have faith, of like understanding what the promise looks like as it comes through. So it looks at what happens when, when we believe, how things happen. But, um, but Paul references David in one of the Psalms, and it's actually Psalm 32. So I want to add that to your reading list is just to look at Psalm 32. And I don't want to get too much in into that, but um, but there is something that's that's brought to the table here, and that can't be overlooked. Is and the reason that Paul references this is because David addresses the number. He addresses really three really important things. There's actually probably six or seven things he addresses, but three really important things. Number one is the importance of repentance. Um, you know, D David he stresses that. Now keep in mind this is like more than a thousand years or 800 years or something before before Jesus. So uh, the importance of repentance. And the second is he talks about the the pain or, or the distress that he's in really kind of as a result of, of sin. And then he talks about the value of forgiveness. So he's talking about the simplicity literally of the gospel of Jesus almost a thousand years or a thousand years before Jesus even came on the scene you know David was promised that a king would be through his line always but I mean I, I don't know if he really understood that one of his descendants would be Christ himself and so uh, so you know we don't want to just look at at faith being the only thing that is that is the the importance or the piece of, of righteousness here you know David talks about the actual gospel the repentance you know, uh, some of the, not lamenting so much, but understanding the weight of sin and then really understanding the, the weight and the significance of, of forgiveness. So, um, so chapter or yeah, chapter 32 of Psalms, I, I really want you to look at this so we can, we can pick that apart some in our discussion. I think if we don't look at it through that lens, then we're probably not going to be looking at the fourth chapter or of Romans um, very objectively so the next is, is that obviously he's using Abraham as that example for us and we find that in Genesis but specifically in chapter 15 you know we can you can look at the story starting in 14 really uh, kind of coming down to the end but the main but he starts off 15 in verse 1 of God saying he, he's telling Abraham, right? He, he addresses him specifically. And he starts off by saying, I am your shield. Which, when you look at that, it's so amazing. You know, God is like, he's, he's all these things to us. He's creator. He's father, right? He's, he's brother. He's encourager. He's the, the he's, you know, he's our savior. He's, he's all of these things. And in the context of our situation, God is literally, he's all things to, to all people as we need when we need. And he starts off with saying, telling Abraham that he is his shield. And so when we consider that of God reminding us who he is to us, boy, 
uh, man, it, that should add like a multiplier of like 400,000 X onto the righteousness that we're receiving from God because of God who, because of who God is. Now, the reason that the significance of, of Psalm 32 coming into play here is because, you know, the, the first thing, that first point is repentance, but this is also addressed in chapter 15. And what does the word repentance mean? It means literally to turn around. To repent means to turn around or to change our thinking, to exchange our thoughts or lies or schemes or whatever it is that we're thinking um, really for the truth of God. That's what repentance is. And when we look at this man, Abraham is a pretty excellent example of this. And so we see this process, right? The repentance, the pain and the, and the distress of our situation and the weight of forgiveness that comes with that. And then the promise that's in that. It is so amazing, you guys. So, um, so I've got a few questions for you and hopefully they'll make them into the email. Sometimes me and Teddy have a little bit of a disconnect there, but, um, but when we're looking at, at Romans, one of the things I want you to ask yourself is why is faith so important? Like what hinges on faith or not having faith? And the second is why was Abraham's faith counted as righteousness? Now, the answer to these questions is all in there. It's in that text. But why is faith so important and why is it counted to him as righteousness? And then... Um, and then the third question, looking at the text specifically, is who else benefits from the example of faith and your own faith? Like, he talks about this too. He just basically says, you know, Abraham's faith just wasn't, he wasn't the only one who benefited from this. And so that's the text questions I have. But the personal, real inquiry questions that I have for each of us is what's the example of righteousness in your life? Because each one of us has a testimony and your testimony is worth absolutely zero, nothing. If you don't tell somebody, if you don't share it, if you don't talk about it with your church family, with your family, if you don't talk about it on Sunday, right? If we don't tell the story of what happened, it's as if it didn't happen kind of thing. So what's the example of, of righteousness in your life? Or what are some examples of that? If, if you can answer the, the text questions of like, you know, why it's so important and why faith is counted as righteousness, then we should be able to answer this for ourselves. And then the second personal question I have is this, is what is, what's the, what's realized in your life as a result of your faith? You know, Abraham, we see very clearly, you know, because of the faith that he had, what God did, the faith that Abraham had, triggered some really important things, some functions, some, uh, some outcome, right? Some measurable results that God did because of Abraham's faith. So what I want to know is what has God done in your life with you, for you, the people around you as a result of the faith like that, that you have, um, or have had, like what, how is that realized? So you guys get ready to, to come and, and share this and, um, on Sunday because we all need to hear it. We all need to be encouraged by, by one another. Every single one of you has something to share with this. So Psalm 32, I highly recommend that you read it. Genesis chapter 15, I highly recommend that you read it. Um, and then look at these questions that hopefully make it into the email. So we'll see you guys on Sunday.